Hello, it's Scott Mantley here, and today I am orbiting around this rather large space station. I, for this video, I needed to build myself a very large space station, and so this one has about 700 parts, and as the curse of uh, videos would have it, I started out, I built a really big space station, and it wasn't big enough. And so I had to go back and build it again and then make it with more parts. And eventually I got to this one. And this is it's actually happily rendering about uh, 8 frames per second, which um, is still faster than, say, the, um, the transfer ship that I used in EVE or BUST. But regardless, this is a, a spacecraft I've built. And, and the reason I wanted to build something really large was to talk about a plugin which has just turned up. Uh, it's actually version 2 of a plugin which uh, is designed to make such massive constructions a little faster and more efficient if you plan ahead. So yeah, you can see this giant array of fuel tanks on the end. That is where most of the parks uh, actually are. Instead of using orange tanks, I've used these clusters of like, um, the, these clusters of eight fuel tanks each in a single array and uh, essentially join them all up. So it just looks a little cooler, right? So let's see how I actually did this. Now, if you want to build these things, right, you'll end up, well, if you do it the easy way using the quad coupler, then of course you end up with things not being joined and then physics kicks in and things start to fly apart and explode. And Well, you know, it's not good. So of course, how you do this is you use docking ports and you can set the docking ports up now so that they are face to face in the construction uh, in the hangar when they're being built, but they are not actually joined until the model loads for the first time and then it registers that the um, the ports are facing each other. So what, what I do is I drop this in and then uh, pick this up, shift it back, and to stop them, to make sure they're attaching to the right thing, I, I put this little structural uh, fuselage in there. And that then lets me put these ones in and make sure they are attached to that bottom piece first. So, attaching one of those. Obviously, I'm using Alt and Click, if you don't know. Uh, that lets you copy a piece, so it's much faster to duplicate pieces off the model. And that there will uh, essentially hold those tanks all together at both ends and make the structure rigid, right? So, of course, I do Alt-Click and copy that out, and let's load this and see what it looks like. And, it well, it sways a little. You can see those docking ports are being strained, but the thing refuses to explode. It's quite strong under this, uh, under the forces applied to it, and it is able to resist the force of gravity. Um, so you can see all of these. Some of them say decouple, but uh, most of them say undock because they, the the decoupled one is the one that was joined when I created it, and the undock are the ones which were spontaneously docked after the model was loaded. So, if I drop this, well, it lands and bounces around, but uh, I guess that one doesn't fall off. Let's drop this one as well. Oh, there's something exploding now. Let's drop this one. And... <clears throat> lots of explosions, bits falling apart. That's great. Okay. So, we're reduced to a small number of pieces, but the main reason for this video is because of the welding plugin. Now, the welding plugin lets us do something like this without using the trick of docking. So instead of starting out with the end plate, I start with uh, one of the fuel tanks, it's my root object, because the end plates aren't allowed as start objects, apparently because they don't allow surface attachment. So uh, I build up the structure without the docking nodes. The docking nodes in this case are unnecessary. The only thing that's necessary is some patience to get these things associated with the correct nodes. There we go. Now we can slap the end plate on the end, and of course, only one of those things will bond, right? And I'm not sure which one, but only one of those will actually join up. Now, I can drag this up here and weld the part together. And what this does is it will create a new part with all these parts glommed all together uh, with the correct mass, the correct fuel content, various other features. So I can now use that as a part in my designs. Now, there's limits to this. You can't have things with tons of docking ports as one example, right? Uh, because it doesn't know what to do, you know, it doesn't know what to do with multiple parts. So, generally stick to fuel tanks, structural parts, engines maybe, but uh, it'll tell you if it's not sure what to do. So, see the part, it comes out and it works just fine. Now, uh, let's take the end of this, copy it out, 
excellent. So now we have the same structure we had before, and we'll stick on a, another docking node at the end here just to make sure that we've got the complete model here. And there we go. And of course, we need to ha hang this out on a structural thingy. Where's the structure? There we go. Yeah, you know, I probably should have done this in the regular vehicle assembly building the, rather than the space plane hangar, but I guess that was where I built the space station. Because, of course, I cheated the space station into orbit since I only created it to demo this plug-in. <laughs> I am a terrible person. But hey, we load, the, load it up, and what happens? Look, it loads up! And immediately falls apart. Okay, so... It doesn't quite work the same way. It guesstimates what the strength of the object and the joints and everything should be and, you know, may or may not get them wrong. But ultimately, I build, rebuild the space station using these parts and, well, it's a whole lot faster and smoother. I mean, we still get the yellow text uh, on the timer, but you can see the frame rate is much faster and we can... You know, cruise around this structure as we are uh, watching. Oh, there! Look, the the big energy collector is closing down. It must have the thing that it was receiving from must have gone behind behind the planet Kerbin. But there we are. Look, this is a this is all built mostly with parts from. Well, the extra parts all come from the uh, interstellar pack. So we have you know the nuclear reactors, the warp drive, the antimatter collectors, that kind of stuff going on, and. Um, yeah, there is an array of uh, 20 of these objects that I created. 20 of these composite objects. And even though the, the joints aren't uh, proper when they're created as separate objects, it doesn't matter because they're just converted into a single collision mesh. And that seems to work just fine, even though the joints at the end seem to be a little weaker than they would otherwise be. Uh, you know, joints and stuff are... There's no real science, I think, to the numbers. <laughs> it seems to be a lot of guesswork going on. There we are at the end. This is the nuclear reactor. Uh, that is the warp drive there. And, well, apparently that ring is filled with some sort of invisible, dare I say, exotic matter. Um, <laughs> so I have to fly around it, nevertheless. Those are the giant radiators, of course. There's We have a nuclear reactor and we have an antimatter reactor, just in case we... Uh, collect enough antimatter. We're charging up that warp drive, but we don't have any other drive systems enabled on this thing. Look, this thing is positively streaking along when you compare it to the previous one. So yes, this is the welding plugin. It's by Ubio Zur Welding Limited, or just Ubio Zur. It is on Kerbal Spaceport. There is an older version, but uh, make sure you get uh, version 2.0. Uh, also, as I said, the configurations that it produces may not be perfect, so it's, you know, totally acceptable to muck around with them if you feel so inclined. <laughs> I mean, I just cheated two space stations into orbit, so uh, yeah, I don't mind you messing around with your part configurations. <laughs> anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.